creation Give you a thick eyebrow Ah! Yeah. Beautiful. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Suli and I make music and like videos and stuff. <laughs> a year ago, I decided that I am going to ditch getting a job at like a standard office because I just realized that it wasn't my thing after trying it out for some time and take the plunge to give myself a year to pursue making music full time. I had some savings. It could last me about a year or so to let me do music full time. And this September actually marks year one of my music career and I never thought I, I really didn't think that I would be able to extend this year. I really didn't see how, but I'm I'm proud to say that I can. I can I can continue the journey. I can continue making music. I can continue making videos. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I want to thank you guys so much. Thank you. Um, as a way to celebrate this year one of my musical journey i wanted to do like a little q a answering some of your questions and just and just just be just be real honest and sit down have a little chill talk questions question question questions answers 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 uh so here we go how do you how to be confident of being yourself in front of the camera and how long does it take you to write some relatable songs ironically i think the way to be yourself in front of the camera is to not worry about being yourself in front of the camera i think so many times it's like oh my gosh is this like is this the real me is this like like am i pretending too much or like am i not i think the number one problem when it comes to going in front of the camera is thinking too much, even about like being yourself. So I think the best way to do it is to film yourself as much as possible without worrying about, you know, all that sorts of stuff like being yourself. Just, just, just do it. Just do whatever that feels right for you. Just do it as much as you can, basically, I think. How long does it take me to write songs? Uh, it usually, most of my songs usually take around less than a day to write. And like in terms of time, it takes even less. Sometimes my brain just wouldn't function and would it wouldn't even be able to think up words. So I just sometimes let a song kind of finished, written halfway through, and then I just let it sit. And when my brain starts functioning and working properly again, then I would revisit it. But in terms of the total amount of time that I spend on writing a song, I think it would total up to around two, three hours maximum. Uh, since you said it, what's your favorite chocolate chip cookie flavor? I am obsessed with this. Hold on, let me just get it, actually. Okay, so I recently have been obsessed with this thing called Chick Chalk. Chick, Chick Chalk. And uh, it's like, it's originally just like normal chocolate chip cookie flavor, but I think they're like coming up with like loads of different uh, exotic flavors and this one in particular is called uh, it is a tiramisu flavored one it doesn't really taste i hate tiramisu by the way and like the actual tiramisu but tiramisu flavored cookies like man this is good i'm actually not supposed to eat this because this is the last one in the box and i'm supposed to share with my sister so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna actually save this actually i might just get a bite mm. What art inspires you? Do you know some artists that are underrated that you would like more people to know about? I don't think they're they're technically artists, but they're like a design art direction agency called Snask. And I really, I really love their work. They they use so many like colors. I'd like to describe their work as like Wes Anderson on speed. Because it's like super popping colors and like super bold. Uh, visuals and I love their work. I just love their work. When did you realize that your music has an audience here on YouTube? When did you experience your first moment of fame? I mean, I, I've always had an audience. It just wasn't as many as as I have now. Definitely it, it skyrocketed when I'll Just Dance took off on Reddit. That month that I'll Just Dance came, came out, I went from 1,000 subscribers on YouTube to something crazy like of uh, like 20 30 000. and then it grew and grew and grew and now we're at 100k yeah i don't really mm, i don't i don't think i've ever experienced a moment of fame I, I really don't feel like i have that 
If this means like, oh, has anybody recognized you in the streets? Then no. Oh, uh, who un who inspired you the most? Joji. Favorite pop tarts. The ones with just the, like just all everything's chocolate. Uh, but that's the only pop tarts that I've tried, and I'm sure that I'll like every single one of them. Pop tarts, please. Let let me know. I I like to try your products. <laughs> How was your childhood? Uh. Pretty, pretty decent until my parents split up and then all hell broke loose. What do you think made you so, so free spirited? I, I don't, I, I, I'm far from free spirited. I mean, hence overthinker society. I overthink every single thing, but I do like, I do try to have fun. I do try to have fun with myself because that's the only way I can cope with the, the crippling sense of sadness. Uh, what song that you made that you were most proud of? Ever thought of being in the music business with other famous artists. I'm very proud of the song Winterland because it, it's a very special one for me. I was particularly feeling super melancholy about memory that I had with when my family was still intact <laughs> many 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 years ago with my family on our vacation to Sapporo during winter and it was it's the best 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 memory that I have as a child. So I wanted to encapsulate that memory into a song and that's Winterland. I'm really proud of that song. Uh, being in the music business with other famous famous artists. I mean, my dream collab is Joji and I don't think I'll, that this answer will ever change until I actually do the collab, but I'm, I'm starting to feel like it's, I don't know, I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but it's Joji. I, I'd love to do a collab with Joji. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, that was, that was the question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. What's your approach when writing a new song? Also, what music software do you use? My approach? Just just write it. Just write whatever you want. Doesn't have to be about love. Doesn't have to be about heartbreaks. Doesn't have to be about having a bougie life. Just just write about whatever that's on your mind. That's my approach. Uh, I use Ableton. Ableton Live. That's the only software that I've ever really used to make music. Where did you think you would be in one year, one year when you had just started this journey? Not here. Definitely not at this level. I think I'd ever, I've always, you know, ever since starting this journey I've always wanted to kind of I've always dreamed of having a bigger audience. I've always kind of envisioned it, but it's definitely come in ways that I didn't expect. It's this experience of having my song take off and basically my life changing overnight is it has definitely proved that that just having faith in yourself and what you truly believe in, it really works if you persist and if you really do the hustle to support it. How to deal with unstable mood. Actually, by acknowledging the fact that our moods are, by nature, unstable and that we all have ups and downs. We're never going to be angry or sad or happy all the time. We're always going through phases and there always will be ups and downs and everything in between. Um, and acknowledging that that fact is, is, I think, the best way to deal with the instability of moods and emotions. From my experience. I'm still dealing with it myself. Have you ever made a song about another person you liked? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> when's, when's your birthday? So we could celebrate it. The, my birthday is the same as the expiration date of this yogurt, which is September 18th. Yep, this, I gotta, I gotta eat this up before. I've got like six more of these left, so I gotta... <laughs> Gotta, I gotta eat all of them before. What sparked your interest in conversing with people slash podcasting? It's refreshing to see your genuine interest in other people's stories slash lives. Thank you. Originally sprouted from me having trouble just talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> it was just kind of like, I know I, I said a topic and I decided to just, just go ramble about it, but I slowly found myself having trouble just conversing with myself. It's kind of like talking to myself, but usually when I talk to myself, which I do, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I was like, you know, maybe I just need to start talking to a real human. <laughs> and so I started recently reaching out to people in various different professions and just, just talk about their expertise. And I, I think it, it really could add a lot of value to the people who are watching and to each other for myself and the people who I would be talking with. Cause it's, I think it's just really fun to just exchange knowledge and exchange life experiences and it just benefits everyone. So yeah, it's been really fun. 
my question is, what did it take for you to fully commit to your journey for the full year time period? Because it must have been a very big decision. It was definitely a very big decision, but how I make decisions is I would think for a certain period of time, I would think super intensively about that particular thing. And I would just like ponder over every single possibilities weight every single outcomes and every single uh benefits and and pros and the cons i just i just compare every single possibilities out there and i ask myself loads of questions and i go through that period of just just this mental chaos and just explosion of thoughts and brainstorming and actually pondering over whether or not to go for it but when i do come to a certain point of conclusion i just i just shoot and i just go for it because I know I've thought that much about it. It doesn't really matter how big or small that decision is or how life-changing it is, I'm just gonna go for it. And that's how I make decisions and that's how I made the decision to just take the plunge and go all out with, with music. How did you develop your own sound as an artist? I think it's just by experimenting, just, just by trying sounds and trying things that I think I'd like to hear at that moment of making the sound. I think that's the way I develop my own sound and obviously because my my songs reflect on what I hear, I, what I want to hear at that very moment in making the song, I think I'm still developing as as an artist artist and I think I, I'll always be developing because the things that I want to hear will change. I just always try to make songs that I want to hear that I enjoy hearing because man, I gotta listen to that thing for hours on end <laughs> when finishing it. Top five most recent obsessions. I don't think I can think of five, but uh, I've been obsessed with ASMR cutting sand, like one of those kinetic sand cutting videos, cat videos, always. I've been obsessed with like shopping, eye shopping, ballerina clothes, like leotards and like warm-ups and stuff like that. I don't know why. I don't even know how to ballet, but I just, I just, I think they're cute. What do you find is the most easiest slash difficult about making music? Easiest? I think it's just kind of thinking of melodies because most of the melodies uh, for the songs come from humming and I hum all the time. So I've got like hundreds and hundreds of voice notes of just random melodies on my phone. So all I have to do is just compress that and develop it a little bit further and turn it into a stream of melodies that make a bit more sense. But I find that really enjoyable and quite quite effortless. Difficult? I think it's the technical bits that I'm still learning. Um, it's kind of annoying when I'm just like getting into making a beat or a sound and I don't know how to work something out and I need to like switch to like YouTube mode and watch loads of tutorials. It's kind of difficult when I've got the vision in my head but don't know how to actually like materialize it on Ableton. Out of all the paths, how come you chose music? And do you frequently question everything because that's something that I do on a ba daily basis? I chose music because it's something that I've always wanted to do but never had the courage to. And so when it came to a point where I had to choose either going the standard nine to five job at an office or doing choosing to do what I, what I wanted to do and taking the risk and the plunge to do it, I chose music because it's something that I've I've always dreamed of doing. Uh, and I do frequently question everything. I actually just question everything, not just frequently, just every single thing. Um, I question my own decisions, I question my existence, I question my feelings, I question uh, ideas for videos, I question ideas for songs, I question every single decision that I make, I question it. And it's a big, massive headache, and it's 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 a pain in the bum, but I, I'd like to think that it's it's worthwhile being mindful about things that's going on in life, even if it causes a massive headache. <laughs> Have you ever got your heart broken? If yes, how did you cope from it? What do you do at the precise moment when the heartache is so strong that you can't handle it anymore? Yes, heartbroken. Yes, many, many times. How did I cope with it? I think in various different ways that just feels right for me at that moment. And those are different things. Sometimes just watching a movie helps. Going out for walks. Universally, it just, it just really helps to feel a sense of togetherness when you're going through a difficult time. I think that's why so many people relate to love songs because we've all been heartbroken before and to be able to listen to something so beautiful that sums up what you're feeling in such a precise, succinct, beautiful way. I think that's why music helps so many people 
films help so many people, memes help so many people cope with their feelings because it lets you know that you're not alone in this. So memes, films, music, going out for walks, just talking with your family and friends and just trying to have fun. Just try not to be too serious about it. I always believe in finding humor in everything, even in pain. So try to find humor. I know it's difficult, but it really helps. Did you expect I'll Just Dance and I'm Tired to blow up before you released it? Oh no. I'll Just Dance almost never existed. I almost never really like, it was just a, just a spurt of the moment decision to put it out there. And I didn't even expect it to like get any listeners because at the time of putting it out, I think I had like 85 monthly listeners on Spotify. And I just put it out there as just a desperate attempt to just release my emotions and my confusion. I ate noodles with my family the morning, <laughs> the morning of I'll Just Dance blowing up. And then I came back home after having the noodles and like it had gotten like 10,000 views, which was crazy for me, it was just crazy for me. And then that was when I realized, oh my gosh, maybe this is something, something different. And then, you know, turned out it was something different. <laughs> What are your favorite singers? Han, Joji, Glass Animals, uh, and DNC. I was obsessed with them and I really hope they come back with an album soon. Jack Stauber, I love his kind of experimental sounds and he's a go-to whenever I feel like I'm starting to get hung up on like the rules of making music because he just breaks all expectations with his songs and it's a massive inspiration. Would you want to make some Christmas songs? And how and how would it be? Oh man, I love Christmas songs so much. Like Frank Sinatra, 24 seven playing around the time Christmas comes around. Like just, I love Christmas songs and I would love to do a Christmas album someday. It would definitely have like a hint of jazz cause I, I just jazz, I think it just goes hand in hand with Christmas. Fab food and when's the tour? Assuming you mean like real food, not like in the dessert realm, probably Pad Thai, anything with noodles. Uh, when's the tour? I don't know, fingers crossed that it's soon. I, I, I don't know, I don't have any solid plans to do touring, but Hopefully sometime very soon that I'll be uh, I'll able to perform live for you guys. <laughs> How do you deal with self-confidence issues if you ever had any? Oh man, my entire life revolves around self-confidence issues. <laughs> Self-confidence and self-love is something that I'm, I'm, I'm frankly still working very much uh, on. And I think, you know, it's something, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing for, for everybody. The journey to self-love, I think it's something that it has to be uh, maintained for an entirety of somebody's life. We're always changing and I, we need to kind of adapt to our emotional and physical changes that comes with time. I think for me so far, the best way to deal with self-confidence issues is to embrace the journey. So many times we're always so hyper-focused on the results. You know, when we go on a workout routine or eating better or taking better care of ourselves, we're so super fo focused on the end result of having that dream body, of having that dream state of physical state or mental state that we kind of lose sight of what we're like right now going through that change. And so I think it really helps. It's it's helped me a lot personally to to view this as a journey and that this journey in and of itself is the most beautiful part of it all. And so embrace the journey, I think. That's that's I think that's the that's the way to do it. What are your goals? Uh, it can be regarding music or anything else. Goals, definitely want to go touring someday. It's something that I've always wanted to try and get a cat. Oh my gosh, get a cat, please. I just want to get a cat so badly. But I think getting a cat also involves in getting my own place because the room that I'm in is just not enough. It's not it's not an ideal environment to raise anything alive other than myself so uh, probably getting a cat also involves getting a new place to raise it in how old are you according to this government issued document it says i was registered as birthed on september 18th 1996. i mean yeah that's 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 what it's registered as can you do the math for me sorry because i i've stopped counting age a while ago. I, I really don't see the point of it. Um, age is overrated and overstated and I don't care. And also Google says that I'm 38, which I'm, 
I think it's cool. I'm fine with it. Basically, I'm however old you want me to be. Are, are you trained in music theory or do you play those types of decisions out by ear? I did learn music theory because I grew up playing the cello, but oh man, I forgot everything and I don't even know if I can read sheet music anymore because it's been so long since I read sheet music. So yeah, I just like everything that I make nowadays, it's just my ears. I don't really think about chords nor do I know anything about chords. I, I just rely fully on my ears. Uh, I'm dying to know your journey to speaking English and Korean. Do you speak any other languages? Uh, Korean and English is, is the only two languages, are the only two languages that I'm fluent in. I started learning English around the same time I started learning Korean when I was a baby. So it's not technically my first language, but um, I did start to speak English, learn to speak English quite early on. Although it wasn't until later on in my life that I started to get more comfortable in English because I grew up speaking mainly Korean. I, I think the level of development in, in speaking English uh, wasn't as natural as it was for me to speak Korean. What does a day in your life look like? Wake up, eat, make videos slash music, go on walks, eat, sleep yep that's that's it that's every day every single day <laughs> did anything unexpected happen in your first year er <laughs> did anything unexpected happen in your first year oh uh this is this is something could be really trivial but i had uploaded a cover like a super short cover that i did of an artist called sam henshaw and i'm a huge fan of his songs and his music um, and I uploaded that on Twitter and he liked it. It was like the first time that I ever uploaded a cover and the original artist actually like took notice. So that was, that was really special moment for me. Pineapple on pizza, yes, no, 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 just eat pineapples and pizza just separately. No, not on pizza, no. When you're writing music, do you start with lyrics? or lyrical idea ideas or the music first. Strangely enough, it's actually kind of like, I treat it as two different things. Although they always eventually come together as one song, it's a very different ap approach, either writing lyrics out first or uh, making the instrumentals first. It really depends on the project. When I'm writing lyrics first, it's just me and the notepad and I'm just, I'm just writing out. It's almost kind of like just writing a poem um, so sometimes it doesn't even involve, involve melodies. It's just, just me trying to work out some rhymes, cr just trying to encapsulate an emotion and an experience into words. With making beats and, and the, and the kind of melodies and the instrumentals first, it's really fun because I don't really have to think about words or fishing out for rhymes and phrases. Um, uh, it's just me and the sound and my ears. And it's just, I'm just gonna just punch on my keyboards and see what happens. So it's two different approaches um, that really depends on the mood that I'm in. How tall are you? I'm 163 centimeters. Are there any Korean singers that you like and would recommend? Um, they're not active anymore, but I, I'm a huge fan of this Korean band called Busker Busker. Actually, the lead singer and the song, the lead songwriter of that band called Chang Bum Joon is, is actually still active very much as, as a songwriter and as a singer. And oh my gosh, their songs, Busker Busker and Jung Bum Joon. Oh my gosh, their songs are melodies just so good. It's so good. Huge fan. <laughs> Somebody said, asked me in Korean what song that I listen to a lot nowadays. And I've been listening to Agnes by Glass Animals on rotation, like just all the time. Just, I love that song so much. I get a feeling that I'm gonna be playing Joji's upcoming album non-stop when it comes out. Super hyped for that. <laughs> what makes you happy other than music and family? Cats, animals, they bring so much smile to my face. Honestly, I love animals, they're great. <laughs> How do you face your uncertainties in life? Uh, by reminding myself constantly that nobody really knows what they're doing in life and that nobody knows what's going to come tomorrow and everybody goes through, you know, everybody is uncertain with what's to come in life. Um, and reminding myself this really helps in coping with some uncertain times and, you know, makes me feel less alone in it. What Spanish words do you know? 
Gracias, Taco. Si. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> um, you guys, thank you so much for asking all the questions. I wish I could answer all of them. Uh, I really wish I did. But I hope I've answered enough questions um, to kind of quench some of the immediate questions that you guys had. Um, I might do it again, actually, if, if you enjoy this. Uh, let me know. Let me know if, if you like me to do this again. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy getting questions from you guys. So anytime. I'd love to do it anytime if you guys want it. But thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for just supporting and helping me grow. And this is just, <laughs> I'm just, I, I really can't believe that this is all this has happened and I can continue doing music. This is like, <laughs> makes me so happy. So thank you so much. And you know, it's it's year one. We're just getting started. I can't wait to see what happens um, in the years to come. Let's see, let's see how far we can take this and grow this family. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Hola.